come on. I did the we're, recap we're last time. We're live. Yeah, no, live. I, yeah, yeah, I know we're live now. Yeah, yeah, there Hello. we go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even sound remotely suspicious. <laughs> that little gentle wave. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, look, at, look at Regin's little picture now. I can't. I, I have to go. Sad. You wouldn't know he's such a oh, jerk, right? It's the boy. Oh, Reggie. Um, oh. We all good? Yeah, Regiment's not. Yeah. <laughs> Regiment's not. Oh, uh, hey, Em, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, actually very weird about you. Welcome along uh, to the. Uh, it, it is technically the latest episode of Rise of the Forsaken, and it is the last episode of Book Two. We are in our epilogue uh, as we round out this part of the story. And you'll notice uh, that we are sons, our uh, boisterous and beloved uh, brother regiment. Uh, brother regiment makes him sound like a really dodgy friar. Um, so I'll just say <laughs> our brother dot 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 who is regiment. Um, <laughs> um, and Emma is here in the chat with us tonight to watch along. And uh, Banner, quick Banner. Okay, okay, I'll do that very quickly. Um, <laughs> but just to say, Emma, that uh, we all said it uh, as we were getting ready and James was doing all the, the behind-the-scenes work. Um, you are missed. Uh, we are so happy for you and Sarah. Uh, wait, I don't, hopefully, hopefully that's not doxing. I won't say her name again, just in case that was doxing and I'll end up just, uh, in a never-ending circle of doxing. Um Absolutely love you, and uh, yeah, uh, we are very much looking forward uh, to having you back with us. I hope Baby Regiment is watching. Yes, Ho Aww. yeah, hopefully Baby Regiment is watching. Yeah. Um, and if Baby Regiment wants me to off any of the other characters, just let me know, and I'll do that. Too. <laughs> no, no offing, no doxing. You're all average <laughs> <No. at> this. <laughs> uh, he is watching, and apparently, he may want someone to die. Who knows? No, uh, no one's gonna die. I heard he said his favorite character is Nora, so. So oh, no, that, no, he was throwing up. That was... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. There's a couple of things we always do at the uh, the top of the show. And uh, the first is to just briefly... If you're new here and you this is your first time watching, um, welcome along. Uh, if, if it is your first time and you're in chat, do say hi. Um... We are D8 Dungeon. We are a group of Irish tabletop role-playing game enthusiasts, hobbyists, and just general messers. And uh, our goal really is to just tell <laughs> tell stories. And what's so funny about that? No, I'm just laughing at James. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my camera. <laughs> my camera. This is what people are here for. Um, I can't see without my camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, our goal is to tell stories and share them with people, uh, people like you. Um, and that is to uh, invoke uh, fun, happy, sad, and just uh, just an experience. Uh, which when I does the fun and the happy stuff come? <laughs> Well, it's definitely not coming today. Um, not after that, sass. <laughs> I can't wait to level up. I'm very excited. Who said that was happening? Um, you said last week or last time you said it was happening soon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, soon. Yeah. That, that's one of those terms you use as a parent to go, we'll go to the shop soon. Uh, you'll get your shots soon. Uh, all those things. Um, so if you, cool. uh, yes, homebrew show, you can level up. Um, <gasps> oh, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> if um if you if you don't follow us you can check us out on social media at d8 dungeon uh we have a really great uh, and fun discord community a discord server we always say community discord, discord server with a great community over there as well uh, and we produce a couple of different campaigns uh with content released every week uh, and different shows here on twitch every week um full schedule is available over on our twitter you can see how, how we do some of the shows are have wrapped up or are on a actually all our shows are wrapping up <laughs> i planned that very badly okay next time around we'll we'll space out the breaks um in which case i won't get a break uh but eh, it'll be fine. <laughs> you're not allowed to take breaks the 
other thing to mention uh, is we have uh, an affiliate link with the Rook <gasps> and the Raven. And if you Yay. are a player or a DM and you need a campaign yeah. planner or a journal to keep track of your player notes, then you can see as expertly demonstrated there by Kat and Fiona. Um, Ooh, so level five, level five. I'm level four. That says, I'm level five. That says level 55. <laughs> That's my health. Well, it's my health. I haven't updated it. <laughs> I just need to, to rub that out. <laughs> the, no the notebooks Don't. are entirely customizable, or the journals are entirely customizable. And if you use the code D8 Dungeon at the checkout, you'll get 15% off your order. They ship from Ireland now as well. So if you are based in Ireland, the UK, or Europe, you'll get it that a little bit faster. Yay. Um, and out of the 15%, we do receive a portion of those funds. So your sexy new campaign planner helps us create more content so yeah or pay artists or musicians to help us score things for the shows and stuff like that so everything everything we make always goes back into the shows um so yeah there there's that the other thing the other thing we do at the top of every show is and just before we would often rule for a recap um but uh i think do, do y'all want to do you all want to do it do y'all want to do it? I do think it. you should recap everything. I think so Declan should recap and then we all get inspiration. I think okay, Emma we'll... should do it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I mean, I'm happy to roll for a recap if, if y'all want to roll for a recap. Uh, the inspiration might be useful. Uh, just saying. Uh, but if not, then I will quickly summarize the events from chapter 18. Um, Drahar. I think you rolled so shit last time, Declan. You deserve the inspiration. I actually didn't swap out the dice, and you have reminded me. And I desperately hope I have dice at hand that I no, can no. reach. You're, no, you, you, if, you're, if oh. you're automatically going to get inspiration for this, you have to keep the dice that you have. Look at him there with no. his pill box of dice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to get me some sexy dice. Um, I'll do a very quick recap um, and uh, we will dive straight into it. I have two sets of the same dice. That is bad Give money me one. spending habits. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with my uh, Cassiopeia dice because these are gorgeous and wow. they are my evil dice. Um, right. And I do feel like I need them this evening because that'll be a load of fun. I'm using um, my um, dice twinsies with homebrew. Ben posted oh. his dice earlier. Oh, I saw. Oh my God. I also have them, so I'm going to use them because I haven't used them in ages. Uh, um, okay. Last session, a plan had been uh, <clears throat> a plan had been uh, scrambled together, and it quickly fell apart with the group divided. Um, Umbra returning and the ship just arriving carrying the 64 uh, rebels from Cashlan who had joined your quest to un uh, effectively to free the town of Cove from the to uh, totalitarian grip of Captain Ferran, the bloodthirsty, malicious bastard i think there's like, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it is just one of those words that just works really in this case because Farron is he he is just that and there's no point spending time wasting a breath uh giving him any other form of adjectives but you quickly realized that uh Farron had had ulterior motives or had at least uh believed himself to have been backed into a corner. And very quickly, what plan had been formed uh, started to fall away bit by bit. Nulra, uh, shocked and traumatized after going into full rage, uh, fled in a state of confusion. Mooney uh, was chased by a huge group of Ferran's men. The house was surrounded. Diara and Umbra were sheltered and hiding um, and witnessed Tilly's ultimate sacrifice as uh, she turned the cannon that was aimed at the ship bringing the rebels uh, on herself. Just when, just when it seemed as if everything had been lost, that moment seemed to tilt the whole scale of the battle, and the five uh, were rejuvenated, and a, uh, 
the tide of battle began to turn as the 64 rebels landed on Cove Harbour and began to engage Ferran's men. The group sought Ferran out, though Regiment was very much determined to see the captain brought to justice uh, and brought to an end. Unfortunately, at every turn, Ferran managed to just uh, scramble free from Regiment, ultimately making it to a small boat docked against the jagged uh, cliffs of Cove. Regiment gave chase, imbibing Olam's potion, and ultimately his sacrifice, his efforts were in vain as he became petrified and Ferran threw his body over the side of the boat and he sank. Vestra had also appeared and accosted Mooney and the group spouting and hissing tides of doom and prophecy and just vile hate in your general direction. Vastly outnumbered, she fled into the darkening evening sky and as thunder rolled out and the sky flashed with white light, it began to rain in Cove and shouts of celebration, cheer and cries were heard. The rebels had won. Ferran's men had surrendered. The captain had retreated. And we pick up with Nolra, Umbra, Mooney and Diara in the house at the stairwell. You can hear all the, you can hear all the cheers coming from outside. All Farron's men have fled, Declan? Um, the, the, all the Farron's men in the house are dead. There was one guy left at the end, that Minotaur guy. Is he gone? Uh, no, he hasn't run, but he is looking apprehensive. Apprehensive? Kick his ass, Nora. Threatening? Who's he looking at? He's not looking at anybody. He's he's kind of got an eye on the door and he sees what's happening outside. Um, he throws, uh, he throws his long sword down. Mooney's going to cast Tasha's hideous laughter on him. Okay. He needs to make a wisdom save of 15. That is a three. <laughs> uh, he, you actually, Mooney, as you focus on him and the, the magic just erupts around you, uh, it washes out and over and Umbra, you can feel it. Uh, you can just feel this intense magic burning around Mooney. Give me an Arcana check, Umbra. That's a nat 20. <gasps> Whoa! It's very, it's very strange, um, Umbra. You, you, you've never noticed this before. It's not something. It's not something you you'd ever even thought about or um figured about Mooney but since since the um since the encounter in Kashlan and the pier um since you awoke in the the tavern alone whatever whatever happened in the interim your connection to magic is very different now it's not only an immediate understanding of the type of magic the source and where it's coming from it is an understanding of what magic really is this sort of energy drawn from within and around cast out twisted and shaped but with Mooney it's not like that at all the magic didn't exist until Mooney thought about it It, as in, you did not feel the magic around her, you did not feel the magic within her. The magic just came into existence when she thought about it. It's I'm like being, it's like, <laughs> it's like, 
it's like filling a jar full of marbles and you know the jar is full of marbles and that's the magic and then you look inside and there's all the pockets of air that exist and kind of form around it it's just it's just very it sticks and you're not from like a white. magical physics perspective that's presumably deeply unnerving right she made magic like she didn't yeah. she didn't manipulate it she didn't pull the energy from something within her or around her she made the magic and then made the magic do that the way anybody who had you know a lump of clay there was no clay and then Mooney went oh I want clay and clay appeared um that's the I suppose that's the best so it is that like that's not normal that's not how magic works um and Mooney, as it just washes out, you see the you see the Minotaur actually he's he's struggling against it, and then his eyes begin to water, and he crumbles down into a half a lurch. And I he's thought down this on his would knees. be better, but this is actually a little bit more creepier, isn't it? <laughs> Umbra like casts an eye around the many corpses and this one laughing <laughs> half dead minotaur. minotaur. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Do yeah, you no, think it's just should let him run? Do you think that would be less disturbing? I don't know. What's his, what's his whole deal? Oh, I, don't, I just thought of something funny and then he just started laughing a lot. Can you get no. him to fuck off, Mooney? Can you just tell him to go? Uh, I don't think I can. I think I could just, you know, I could probably like make him real small or I could make him invisible or I could like bury him again, but I don't think I could get him to run away, no. The entire time he's looking up at the three of you as you discuss what to do with him and he's just <laughs> laughing like he's just his eyes tell a very different story his eyes are he's he's afraid but he's just laughing do you think maybe we should tie him up i would say tie him up and it sounds like things have gone well out there so we can just kind of let the villagers decide what to do with them once we find the villagers Oh, I should probably go and find them. But you're looking well yourself. You're not dead anymore. Not dead. Uh, yeah, he didn't nope. tell me what happened. Nora's going to reluctantly show her axe, by the way, seeing that okay. this guy is a bit incapacitated. And now that there's not an immediate threat, she's going to remember, oh, shit, shit. And she's going to just like start patting down like her pockets and everything. Fuck, where, where did I put it? Where the fuck did I put it? And she'll find Umbra's potion with the bit of material sticking out of it that hopefully stop it. <laughs> oh. And she's just going to shove it to him. There, there. That's your potion. I got it back. It's good. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, that... He gingerly takes it and, like, goes to take her hand in his um, as she hands it to him, uh, realizes it's slick with blood and kind of withdraws. Like, yeah. Many gives him a big hug. <laughs> he, uh, he, yeah, no, he's he's all for it. He's all for it. Group uh, hug. He's like, oh, okay, hold on. Actually, sorry. Reggie needs to be in the group hug. We do have to go get I, Reggie. Oh, and Brassica, do you, do you not oh, bring Brassica with you? Brassica take, didn't want to come the whole way, and I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Oh, I. So no, Brassic is waiting where it's where there's no immediate danger. I'm gonna run upstairs or run back in to where I last saw Regiment and see the dining if I room. Can, uh, yeah, yep. see if I can find him. Regiment, come on now, it's all over. Where the <clears throat> fuck are you? Your voice just booms throughout the dining room, and you see that the the doorway to the kitchen or that the hallway towards the kitchen area. No, right. There's scorch marks on the walls. The door frame has been hacked into bits, and there's a small pool of blood on the the ground. She'll kind of go 
a bit on alert and call back to the others, get in here and now. And she's not going to wait for them. She's going to continue down that corridor and see, hand on her great axe and see give what me, she can find. Give me an investigation check. Oh, wow. My strong suit. What's everybody else doing? The cheering outside is getting louder. Ooh. Um, Diara is just going to kind of walk to the door that Nola is at and just start casting message in all directions in the hopes that she'll hit Reggie. Uh, and just be like, come on, Stumpy. <laughs> I got an 18. Dyer, as you approach the doorway inside, you see Nolra and she's like, she's looking at everything. Her eyes track the wall, the, the ground, the ceiling, the small doorway into the kitchenette and kitchen area beyond. You... You just brace yourself against the door frame and you pull the magic up and you there's like a half a half a smothered like laugh. Like there is it's that thing of you're happy, it's over. This is this is done, this is finished, you're exhausted, you've survived, you've made it. And you reach out to Regmond. There's either he's too far or or what, but your voice casts outwards. And Umbra, you feel it. You feel that energy. It is a wave that just rises, ripples, and rolls out of Diara. It you can almost hear the words, she says, as the magic is conjured up around her and just expelled outwards. And the wave rises, crests, and falls. And the magic dissipates, never hitting its target. Um, she kind of looks a little worried over her shoulder at Umbra. And then turns to Nolra and says, how long ago did you see him? Like, how far could he have gotten? And she's going to stand there and realise that she doesn't know. And she doesn't know why she doesn't know. And she'll just turn to Dyer and say, I, he, he was here. He went after Farron. I don't, I don't know how long Dyer. I, I was her down heart. with Mooney and I should have come back for him. Hang if on, he went after Farron, we should probably chase after him. It's fine. Look, hang on. I, I, it's fine. I can, I can, I can track him down. Um, he's, Umbra <laughs> is kind of what? hurriedly, I, I can, give me a second. He kind of just peeks is this behind That's not really Umbra. Umbra, is that you? That's not him. He's really shit at tracking. Are we sure it's him? <laughs> okay, or I won't. So that's, that's fine too. Um, <laughs> oh, come on, don't be so twitchy. Can I notice if he has still his jewellery on the hand that Regman put it on? Yeah, only because you were there when Regiment did it. He, he hasn't, Umbra hasn't seemed to have noticed it at all, but the jewellery is still swapped on his hands. No will uh, <laughs> snort and realise that that is her brother. And I'm, okay, then you do your, you track, you track him, go on, I'm watching. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, Umbra casts detect object, um, looking for... Umbra's like, what would he have on him? He definitely, he might, he might have done away with the the hand axes. He might have chucked the hand axes. He probably have his potion. His potion. You can look yeah. for that. The beads in his beard. Yeah. His axe. No, it... He never let go of his axe. He always had that on him. Okay. You can look for his shoes. No, they're. Oh no, they're disgusting. <laughs> No, but he um, never takes them off. I know, that's the problem. Uh, he is going to look for his axe. Only because he himself has lost a potion, so he's not 100% certain as to the, <laughs> the reliability of that one. Um, so he's going he's gonna to detect object, or locate object on his uh, regiment's great axe. Uh, if it's within a thousand feet of him, he uh, senses the direction. 
If it's in motion, he knows the direction of the movement. So wait, if it's in a, if it's within a thousand feet, you know, and if it's moving, he knows you'll the know. direction it's in, and if it's moving, he knows where it's going. Essentially, once it's within that thousand feet, it's that you know when you're you know when you're holding on to something like a like a tiny piece of thread that you're trying to. Um, so effectively thread through the eye of a needle and you're being really, really difficult and it's hard to hold on to. You reach out, focusing on Regiment's great axe. It is as much as part of him as his beard is, um, as his witty repartee is, as his mason jar collection is. The axe is there. It's a thousand... It's just a thousand feet away. And it is moving, and it is gone. It is traveling east, northeast. He would. He he knows east. the co He knows where the coastline is, right? Yeah, it's out past. It's out beyond um, the mayor's house. He has just sailed right on, clean on away. He is on. He is on a boat or something. He's gone out and starts. He makes a start towards the direction of the back of the uh, of the town hall. Then did you you gesture like did Umber point in the direction? Yeah, yeah. No, we'll be gone. gone. He turns back to and just like kind of pleadingly at Mooney and Dara, he says, "There's got to be wounded out there." Uh, I mean, we could stay behind if that's what you're saying. Is that what you're saying? I don't have much juice left. I don't know how useful I'm going to be. I can't heal it at all. <laughs> Unless you want me to make them all really small or bury them. <laughs> Give me... Okay, hang on. Have you... Which is the HSE's problem, you know, solution to all our problems. <laughs> Everybody just gets really small. small. Hey, very... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I shrunk the patients. Yeah. Good job. To, to Diara... Do you have anything left? If you find Reggie and he's hurt, are you okay? That's what I'm saving the last of it for. Well, then y'all go on ahead. I'll check out on. I'll check out in the wounded, and I'll come back as soon as as soon as. But I... what if we need you to do the findy thing again? <laughs> it's gone. I can't. I can't keep up with it. You it's can only, only do it once. It's... He's no, not that it's not fast. That... What do you mean you can't keep up with it? I'm not a. Fucking sailboat. <laughs> he's in a boat? Well, he's he's in the water, and I don't think Reggie swim that fast. Can Reggie swim? It's... <laughs> I wish I could hear all of this. <laughs> I have so many comments to make. <laughs> Did I notice anything on my investigation, by the way, Declan? I was, yeah, I was about to come to that. As you, it's much the same as the, the hallway and the door uh, that you when you went into the living room, Nolra, and with Diara and Mooney and uh, Umbra behind you kind of trying to find him, you continue to kind of search and the walls here are, they're just as damaged. Um, there's slash marks. Uh, even the ceiling has like been kind of carved into. There isn't, there isn't a lot, there isn't as much blood as by the doorway. Um, a lot of stuff kind of knocked over. There's a broken vase. It's, you, and you can hear the sound of a door kind of slapping as a, a, the wind has kind of caught it and is banging it, but it's not, it's too quick to, to shut. It's not, um, it's not shutting. And you can hear the breeze and uh, and a small bit of commotion from beyond as you I'll, run. Yeah, I'll continue out. I mean, yeah. um, oh, I heard Umber say that he's on a boat, so I'm yeah, making you're a beeline going, going for the out. coast. Yeah. On that, actually, would he have got a sense? He probably, if he knows the direction it's moving in and it's leaving his range, then did he get an idea of the speed? Would he know to assume he's on a boat? It, it is because it it was that thing of the axe is there and it's it's gone. It, it it moved out of. It's it is moving quickly. It like versus Regman's swimming speed, he's probably on a boat. You just saw the comment as well. I wish. <laughs> Radius Olness said, 
it was always his fate to eventually turn into a stone mason jar. <laughs> Phenomenal. Oh, <man. laughs> um, Umbra panics a little, uh, not knowing whether to go, not knowing which way wait, to go. Wait, I, I can do a little bit of healing. I've got my good berries, so I can go out and pick 10 of my favourites and <laughs> save them and leave the others to die, but at least they'll die doing what they loved. Fighting for a town they didn't even live in. <laughs> that and I could go get Brassica and we can Cat, look, you look. can take Cat, take please take inspiration. Uh, you're you're giving serious moony vibes tonight. <laughs> I don't know if I should be encouraging it, but here we are. <laughs> Moony's not even gonna wait for them to like him and her. She's gonna because she's so tall, she's going to take her little siblings and she's going to start like pushing them towards the door. You okay. go, I'll get Brassica, regroup, pick my favourites, and then I'll come get you. Get get Targle, you saw what he did that, man. I think I should and go then, get Targle as well. Just give I'm the just berries to just give the berries to someone out there and they can feed them. You don't have to feed them to people, just give them and come right back, okay? I want to feed them to people. <laughs> we have to find Redmond. I thought when you were you, gone. You are gone. <laughs> You're standing oh, from the hall. Oh, 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 oh. Mooney, she's as running you... outside, just jumping over the laughing guy, and she's all right. Okay, as uh, yeah, you're encouraging uh, Diara and Umbra to go <laughs> after Nulra to find Regiment, and you'll see what you can do outside. And I'll come to that in two seconds. And Diara and Umbra, as you turn and head after Nulra, uh, Nulra, you like catch the door as it kind of comes to slam in again and you push it open standing at a cliffside you see two half orc men um, do i recognize them as the ones that were in the room they were the ones that were in the room they were the ones that carried away um tilly and richter okay great axe off my back storm over where the fuck is he My fucking brother. <laughs> you mean the short fella? Yeah, the short fella. Where the fuck is he? Uh, and he, the the taller, the slightly taller of the two uh, half orcs, just kind of tosses the scimitar into his right hand, and he holds it up. Have a look, and he gestures over the cliff. Okay. How far are they from the cliff? They're at the cliff's edge. They're right at the edge. Yeah. Nora will walk over, like, away from them. She doesn't want to be right beside them at the edge. She's going to have her axe out at the ready and peer down where they're gesturing. What do I see? You see nothing. We just see rocks and the sea below smashing against them violently. White foam churned up, spitting suds and mist into the air. The two laugh. She's going to walk right up, grab the scruff of the neck of the nearest one. How tall are they? They're six, seven and six, eight. I'm taller than them. She's going to lift him off the ground. I... Where the fuck is he? Give me a... Uh... Str Give me an athletics check. Gladly. Uh, uh, you'll be rolling this opposed. Am I still considered to be in rage? No, I think you dropped yes, it. I don't think I did. You didn't take any damage. <laughs> didn't you? Damage? I took damage. No, no, Are I'll you... drop it. No, no, I'll drop it. Let me just do a straight. Yeah, because you, you you've been fairly like you've been fairly chatty for someone who's in a rage. <laughs> well, I got I got nineteen, so suck oh. on it. Okay, <laughs> but that still beats my fourteen. Um, so you grab the, they're and they're identical. They're identical uh, twins, um, okay. bar that one inch uh, difference in their height. And I had to stress that because I literally saw Eilish's face. Um, <laughs> You grab uh, the the shorter of the two uh, by the the scruff of, of uh, his coat, and you haul him up. Now you haven't got him; like he's not 
dangling off the ground like but he he's tippy toes are kind of scraping against it oh what, you're gonna <laughs> you're just as stupid as your brother is love and the other fella uh, he's gonna try and stab you <laughs> A little and giggle from you, you fucker. <laughs> not really, because uh, that was crap. That was a six to hit you. Um, mm. He, again, it's that he, he does lunge with the, the scimitar to kind of take a swipe. Uh, and when he does, he almost catches his brother. So he's a little, he's a little less confident. No, he's not in a good place right now. And she's worried about well Regiment. <laughs> She's going to toss the guy she's holding over the cliff. Okay. Uh, again, athletics check, and I'm going to be rolling a strength just to see he's, he can hold on like his arms aren't bound. 22. Plus zero to strength. <laughs> These lads are all talk. So that is an 11. Bye. 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 <laughs> Okay, I'll just roll the damage then. Uh, okay. So, oh, fuck. I don't think I have got that much left. No. Uh, as the other one, as the taller took a swipe at you and the other one kind of half spits a, a smothered laugh, um, confident that you're not going to, you turn and with your full motion Umbra and Dyara you just see Nolra half turn her body and she lets go of a young half orc man and he plummets to his death over the cliff. There's a scream that just rises up and is drowned out by the crashing waves below. Nolra what are you doing? I'm just going to turn to the brother and say feel like talking now. No, he does not. And that is an 18 to hit. <laughs> yes. Um, da, 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 da. Take six slashing damage. Okay. Uh, as he brings the scimitar up and he he just claws at you with it. Um, um, can... Are we in <laughs> initiative or anything? Uh, not... I mean, yeah, I suppose we can if you want to roll for it at this stage because he's fully engaged and he now wants to shove Nolra off a cliff too. Um, you can try. Okay. It's five for me. Dirty 20 for me. Whoa. I'm so glad the dice are reflecting how pissed off she is. 15. And eight. Okay. Yeah, um, he just slashed at you with his scimitar, uh, Nolra, and as it claws right through you, um, the stinging pain uh, kind of half brings you to your senses. Uh, he's foaming at the mouth with rage, and his eyes, they sting with tears, but his brow is furrowed in anger. Um, and he holds the blade at you. His back is completely turned to Dyara and Umbra. It's your action. Uh, it's a he's holding it in one hand, sword. Yep. Can I attempt to snatch his wrist and twist, which is something she used to do as a child to her siblings to get them to drop the stick they were trying to hit her with? But she's not doing this delicately. She will break his wrist if she needs to. Okay. Uh, I would argue if you so it would be an unarmed strike, okay. and then uh, a grapple uh, okay. against him. Eighteen to hit. That, yeah, that'll do that. Uh, you lunge at him, uh, and as you do, you just grab both hands, grab his wrist. You squeeze, and he he winces in pain. The scimitar flails in his hand. He's still struggling to hold on to it. Uh, give me a uh, another athletics check, and he'll be making a strength saving throw. Oh, for the love of God, I shouldn't. Dirty twenty. Oh, that's a nat one. Uh, you break his, you literally break his wrist um, as you grab, twist. You, 
it's a full motion. And again, Umbra and Dyara, you see it. Nulra grabs this man, turns his arm in a way that an arm shouldn't move. Uh, he's down on his knees. He cries in pain as there's a crunching of bone. And the scimitar falls to the ground with a ring. Now, one last fucking prick. Where's my brother? Ferrin. Ferrin's got him. Where the fuck is Ferrin? Halfway out to fucking see you, stupid bitch. And he spits back up at you. Can I, while still holding him, can I like look out at yeah. the horizon and see if I can spot a ship? Or a boat or anything? Uh, give me a perception check, uh, Diara. Do we hear that? Yeah. 19. Um, yeah, Diara's just going to run to the edge of the cliff and start shouting for Reggie. Okay. Umbra? Umbra's going to walk over to the edge of the cliff and look to see the other half work that was dropped uh, he's lying broken against rocks the he's half caught between two large jagged pieces and the tide is like it's that thing of the tide lifting him a little bit and pulling him out but he's snagged where he is his arm is twisted and his leg is twisted uh in very unnatural ways i don't know if he's dead or just uh, dying he he doesn't even, like, he, he's not crying out in pain. His arm, he doesn't seem to be flailing or struggling. From up here, you can't tell if he's dying, uh, but he's not, his body's not moving. Returns to nowhere and just says, put him down. <laughs> Did I see anything on my perception check before I decide what she's going to do? No. The sea is choppy. Um, the sky is darkening. The sun overhead is being swallowed by clouds. Uh, it's attempting to uh, to burn through, but no. She's no patience left. Family reunion. And she'll chuck this guy over the cliff as well. Okay. You're going to make this attempt. Neither Diara or Umbra did anything that would warrant an action, as far as I'm concerned. Are either of you going to attempt to prevent the needless murder of a very handsome half-orc? Needless? <laughs> Where's my fucking brother? I don't I care you, how handsome he is. He's on a cruise. Baron's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because you, you, you both see Nulra go to, I mean, she's not even, like, she's not even making it, like, she's not even trying to hide it. She's dragged this guy up uh, onto his feet and is going to shove him off a cliff. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tayara's going to use thaumaturgy to make her voice louder than the noise of the waves and say, Nulra, we're not murderers. We're not like them. That's not me anymore. She's going to continue trying to do it unless Umber tries to stop her. Uh, we'll watch how it pans out. Okay. Um, give me an athletics check. He'll be rolling at disadvantage. 19. Okay, he rolled two 11s, so... Umbra will um, cast Silvery Barbs to give Nora disadvantage and him advantage. Oh my goodness! So <laughs> that, Saving you from yourself. I'd still be an 11 because I rolled with disadvantage so it would cancel it out, so... What did she get that then? 11. Oh my god, I got a 10. Do I know that Umbra has done this? <sighs> It has, the spell has a verbal component, so he would have had to say something. So what do you say? 
something. <laughs> <laughs> he, not particularly loudly, I think very quietly, he just says, you made the wrong choice. And as you go to, like, you go to let go, uh, Nora, and when you do, your hand releases, but the orc with his free hand has kind of just snagged onto uh, your armor and he's holding it. Um, he's able to, he's still standing. Can I run over and just put a hand on her chest? Please. She's going to kind of She's going to just bat away angry tears. She's going to just shoot a look over at Umbra and she's so pissed off with him right now, but she bites back a scream. She pushes Diara's hand away, flings York down, and she's going to try and find a way. We're up in the cliff. Mm -hmm. She's going to try and find the path down to the to the water's edge. Um. Yeah, just letting the orc kind of like shoving him back a little bit and shouldering your way between Diara and Umbra, you you storm off, eyeing the the edge of the cliff and the coast below, looking for a path down. There is a very narrow um, and jagged one. We'll go for that. Okay. While Umbra and Diara, you stand there, like, the half-orc kind of looks at the both of you. Um, and he's now sought, like, there's tear, the tears that were in his eyes, um, they're now running down his face. And he looks down at the, the the dead man below. And he just looks at the pair of you and beelines it for the house, making his way around it. Oh, I was going to shout at him. <laughs> you, you still can. Um, no, it's okay. I'm just going to follow Nora. He catches Tyre on the shoulder and says, "Could you, could you message Mooney or or some Targal or someone and make sure that one doesn't get away? He's still, they're still, they're not good people." Mm. Um, she puts her hand back towards the village and tries to find Targal because she knows Mooney want to try and stop him <laughs> and says um, one of Farron's twins is making his way back around what house did you say? The, it was the mayor's house, Farron's the, house. Yeah, around the mansion. Uh, don't let him leave. You reach out to Targal um, and it, it, you feel the magic connect um and you just get a a, a response where are the where are you we're at the cliffs what are you reggie Zyra. is missing we think Farron took him i've i've got some of his men have already started fleeing they're they're looking to make escape i've got a couple of the volunteers looking for them i'll i'll come to you and with that uh we cut to mooney who has made her way out a handful of good berries um and yeah um outside mooney you do see it's there are several of Farron's men scrambling out of the gates and over walls looking to flee and they are being chased by smaller little groups of the volunteers and the rebels. Uh, in the square you see Targal and a handful of the volunteers including um, Marlin um, are they seem to be taking care of the injured and accounting for the missing. I will run over to Marlin and Targal with my little hand of ten good berries. Do you need any help? 
Um, Marlin kind of looks up at you, um, and Targo just kind of takes a, a step towards you. Uh, m- Moni, g- glad you're all right. Are the are your are the rest okay? Yeah, everyone's grand. They've just kind of lost sight of Regmond. We think that he ran over. He ran after Farron. So we were just trying to catch up with him. I think he might be on a boat. Oh, that would explain why my men haven't been able to find him. The others are safe. They're not injured. No, they're fine. I think so. But do you know where all the townspeople are? A couple of Farron's men have told us that as a as a possible escape plan, Farron had set up a prison in a cave and a secondary cannon aimed to take the roof out and bury the townspeople in it. Oh, that's not good. <sighs> It's fortunate that we were able to overrun them. Do we know where the caves are? We should probably go and get them all out. Right. I've sent, I've sent a group to deal with it. Uh, you, could you perhaps help us with? And he kind of looks around, and you do see several injured um, folk. Um, people that had signed up to help. There's also a couple of Ferrin's men that are injured. Um, they're bound, but they are being treated. There's a couple of um, healers in the the group that boarded the ship. I mean, I can only heal ten of them. So I could give nine to the good ones and then give one to the bad ones and make them fight over it. <laughs> Your... That was a joke. Okay. I don't uh... think we should give any to the bad ones. That was also a joke. <laughs> he, uh, Marlon just kind of like takes a step in between. Um, can you, could you help me? I'm trying to, and he points down at uh, a middle-aged uh, tiefling woman. Um, she's one of Farron's men, and she has quite a lot of blood coming out of her ears it's, it's mostly dried um she was a victim of diara's shatter um and her eardrums are currently ruptured um and they the, he's cleaning the wound like he's cleaning kind of the blood away um her hands are bound behind her back and her feet are shackled what do you need help with i'm i'm a little out of my depth here i I, I can just barely take care of her. Like, can you heal her? Um, Many bends down and she has like a little good berry and she just like, um, is the tiefling conscious? Yeah, she is. Yeah. Does she look angry? Uh, She's not making eye contact. Hello. She's, her, head, her head's down. Hello. Do you want a berry? Do you want a wee berry? She, she, one, she can't really hear you because her ears are still ringing. Um, and she just sees you floating a berry kind of in front of her face. What? Do you, uh, you, uh, I'm going to eat one to show, oh no, I shouldn't have done that, shall I? <laughs> nine okay, so we, we could pick nine that we like. So, okay. do you want one to make you, you know, well, it won't help you here. That's sort of like a lifelong thing you're going to have to manage. But I can make the rest of you feel okay. For one hit point. <laughs> give her, just give her a berry. <laughs> just give her, <laughs> give her a berry or a cyanide pill at this stage. She'll take either. <laughs> like, I'll put it in her mouth. Okay. Um, she does seem like the the berry works. Um, Do you have to like, uh, hold, like rub her neck and blow in her nose like a cat to make her smile? <laughs> 
No, she's, you know, aware of what that is. <laughs> you know, ruptured ears doesn't really affect the throat, as far as I'm aware. I'm not an ear, nose, and throat doctor, but I'll hazard a guess. <laughs> I'm going to uh, heal one hit point. <laughs> no. heal, a, heal a hit point. Um, Marlon kind of, uh, he takes you around where they've kind of gathered the injured. Give me... I'm not, actually, I'm, I, won't, I won't make a rule for it at all, uh, Mooney, because he's... He's quite, he, it's very apparent that he's avoiding one corner of the market square. And when you look, there's a very obvious reason why. Why, why? What's the reason? It's where the dead are laid. Oh. <laughs> and there's a lot. Does many recognize any? <laughs> There's quite a few people. There's the the vast majority of them are Ferrans men. The vast majority are they're in that kind of red tanned leather uh, that the the bandits and pirates were wearing in Cove. There's. Are you are you going over to like? Inspect? Oh God, no! She's okay. just like looking over her shoulder. Um. Minnie's going to use all charges of her good berry. Okay. Because why not? So she's got, just got like her little her little dress holding it out like a little apron and she's got about, what, 28 good berries in there. They're like, Oprah, okay. you get a berry. You get a berry. You get a berry. You get a berry. Get a berry. Get a berry. I get a berry. <laughs> One for you, two for me. One for you. Uh, so you're just healing a load of people as you kind of... Yeah, just like going okay. around, as you know, berry, berry, berry. Okay. <laughs> Um, everybody is kind of grateful f for it. Um, most of Fern's men don't say anything. A few kind of hiss um, or bark at you, Mooney, as you kind of approach. Uh, but a, a soldier standing nearby kind of gives you an assurance um, and they're quick to quieten down at that point. When you... As you kind of maneuver around the the square here, it becomes it looks you've been casting kind of an eye over your shoulder. About eighteen of the the rebels died in the attack on Cove. Um, so just uh, a little over kind of maybe a third of what had signed up, or around a third, around a third of what had signed up had fallen. Um, and given their lives to the rebellion in Cove. And as you, again, keeping your back to it, and Marlin is kind of doing the same, you come to a part of the square and you can hear something. You can hear a very soft scratching and a whimper. Minnie's going to investigate. Is an animal noise? You, you see Seamus. <gasps> She's gonna run over. He's, he's, scratching at the, at the ground, um, and yeah, he the whimpering is coming from him. Seamus, are you okay? I didn't know you were here. He's not responding. She's gonna see what he's digging at. He's pawing at something. He's he's scratching at rubble and he's scratching at um, uh, seared uh, earth. Oh no! Minnie's going to. Um, sh she's just going to try and help him dig it all out. You, as you get down on your hands and knees, and you start pulling at the the charred earth and chunks of brick um you you can kind of hear very softly uh, in between the the high pitched whimpers um he's saying tilly's name he just keeps saying tilly's name over and over again oh no tilly she digs faster the berries are just scattered everywhere at this point there's as you as you dig, you don't um, you don't find her. 
you pull the rubble away and there's there's just pieces like pieces like of like awful or just like pieces of rubble pieces of people does she recognize anything there's a an arm clad in leather and iron um there's a half charged broken quarter stuff and you see a very small seared silver bangle the one has just many because she put two and two together does she recognize that there's also rubble of the of the cannon yeah given given the large uh iron tube that's blown wide open and in, 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 in shreds Seamus just let, let just lets out a, a mournful howl many just grabs the little not grabs but just you know, reaches out for the bangle and she just starts crying. She just gives Seamus a wee hug. I'm so sorry, Seamus. She's not here. She's not here. So she's somewhere else then. Aye. But where okay, she's gone, uh, I don't think we can go. And he kinda he, he kinda looks at you and he shakes his head a little bit. I don't where where is she? I don't know. We'll find out one day, but her body is broken. You won't be able to find her while you still have yours. What are you talking about? And he starts she, to growl. She's gone, Seamus. You're, li you're lying. You're lying. She just holds the little bangle out to him. He, he sniffs at it. And he nudges it a little bit with his nose. And a whimper catches uh, in his chest. And he just sets himself down in the wreckage. And he lies down flat. You can stay here as long as you like. But why don't you come and find us? When you're ready, you can come with us. I'm going to wait for Tilly. Don't wait too long. Just give him a little scratch behind the ear. He doesn't respond. Oh. She's gonna tuck the little, the bangle, like just in like the little crook of his paw. He come and find us, okay? He, he kind of he nudges it again with his nose, and he knocks it away towards you. Oh, do you not want to keep it? It smells like her. Don't need it. She's coming back. She's coming back. As you, um, Targle, kind of you, you see, kind of Targle stand in the square a little bit, uh, Mooney, and he kind of he looks around and his eyes make, he makes contact with you, and he just gives you a signal. He points back at the house. And as you turn in the direction, sprinting is a very strong word. <laughs> Running rather 
energetically uh, through the gates. You see the curvaceous form and the jet black fur, the white striped muzzle oh, of Barassica <laughs> bounding straight towards you. Many give Seamus when we last look and she still like fiddling with the with the bracelet in her hand and she just slowly makes her way over to Brassica. She gets down her on her hunches to gather him up if he is if he is so inclined. Uh, uh Brassica is it? Oh, he full on like he comes like bounding into your arms. Like he kind of half hops straight up and he buries himself uh into you. She just cradles him. She doesn't Mooney. say anything. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the others? Well Tilly's dead. Um you, your, the, yeah. your siblings, Mooney, where, 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 and he looks up at you and his face is panicked. Oh. What's wrong? And he looks out at sea. Regiment. The Mooney. storm's coming, Mooney. What do you mean? Oh. The storm's coming. He's at sea. That's not a good place to be if there's a storm. And she's like saying this as she's finding through the house. And Targal is running alongside you, hearing you talk to a squeaking badger. <laughs> um, and as you come running, you find Targal tackles a half orc uh, to the ground. Uh, uh, and literally wails on him like he oh. eats the living daylights. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, paint that's the picture. Paint that's the picture. Just, yeah, she just like, <laughs> looks back at that like a crazy green screen in the background, and she just keeps going. <laughs> I can't give you more inspiration. <laughs> Tell us more about the pummeling uh, later. Uh, oh, okay. Later. Uh, <laughs> um, She's making her way through the house. Uh, you can feel Brassica shaking, like he's, he's shivering uh, in your in your embrace. And as you barrel through the house outside, you can kind of hear uh, you can hear the waves crashing, um, and there's a rumbling of thunder. And Brassica hisses violently. Oh God! And Umbra, you feel a sinking sickness in your stomach. And you see just beyond the edge of the cliff, the air begins to shift and the light begins to twist. Yes, fucking. <laughs> okay. Carry uh, on. <laughs> the sky flashes with white hot light. And then a booming thunderous roar rips through Cove. The clouds open again and a torrential downpour. All of you feel the hair on your body stand. And stepping through this space on the edge of the cliff, Vestra reappears. This bitch. <laughs> One down. Oh. Four to go. <gasps> and she holds her hands out and lightning crackles between her fingers and we are taking a break there. No! No! Absolutely not! No. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> break time. We'll be rolling for initiative during the break. See you all soon. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my god, we're gonna... I'm so glad I took that Thank you.
Thank you.
sync stuff. I'm deleting. We're back on, by the way. Regent. Oh, we're back on. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Hello. Sorry. We're, it was hi. automatically hello. timed. I'm sorry. I've just, I've just Fiona, frightened oh, everyone. Fiona's back. Fiona's back. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to be fair, you did. You actually scared the crap out of us. I was like, oh, God. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was letting the cat in. Sorry. There's a, yeah, that, that needed to be a 15 minute. We all needed to take a, a little bit of a decompression. Welcome back. I hope you had a chance to. Uh, Stretch, hydrate, um, take a bit of a bio break. Uh, it's uh, it's been a blast. Uh, I suppose the one thing to mention, uh, just while we finish up stuff in the background, uh, is that there won't be a rise of the Forsaken for the next uh, month. Uh, this is like this is the the epilogue of this. Um, so we will be taking a, a brief pause. Um, and Saving Grace is over, so that's on a brief pause. And Romancy Dungeon is on its mid-season break, so that's on a brief. Again, very bad timing on my part, but there is a brand new episode. <laughs> brand new episode. It's the concluding part of the Hen Night uh, out this Wednesday for our Patreon supporters and then Friday for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that was with special guests from the Irish Pubcast and Arcavios Eternal. So if you haven't caught that yet, it's available on all podcast platforms. It was such a laugh to run. Uh, the idea of a hen party as a D and D party on a hen night uh, was a was a wild ride. So hopefully, if you have checked it out, uh, great. If not, I do suggest it. The our special guests were absolutely phenomenal, and we have another series coming up right after that. Then, uh, following our very own Roz Grey Purse as she goes back to she goes back to college just in time for us all going back to college and back to work. Well, just me because yeah. I work in a college. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are we all good? Yes. Uh, no. Are we all? Have you all rolled our initiatives? And, and, Another, and so what on? did you get? Seven. I put it in, I think. Did I? No, I didn't finish. There it is. Okay. Umber, what did you get? Also seven. It is in there. Oh, snap. Hey, brother. We're both shit together. <clears throat> I'm Dexter, okay. so I'm probably going to go before you, yeah? I'm not as dexterous as you, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, so who's the real shit one? Okay, we'll see. We'll see what I happens I mean, next. we have to hard end this at half ten because of Eilish. So, I mean, we can keep ticking around. Lightning bolt, I'm, I'm, lightning <laughs> bolt, lightning <laughs> bolt. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, I'll be lightning bolt Eilish to get her out the stream very quickly. Um, okay. Uh, Mooney uh, and Diara, uh, both of you rolled nat 20s. Um, you have one free action before you take your actual actions. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Who's going first? Me. Okay, well, oh. what's your action? That, that's I'm going what to, <laughs> I'm going to cast Bane on Bane. Vistra. <laughs> Bane. 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 And that uh, is all of my spell spots. <laughs> okay. Spell spots. Um, <laughs> spell spots. <laughs> you feel the magic twist up around you as, as you seethes with rage Diara fixating all of it on Vestra and her eyes lock with you for a moment just as you hiss the magic up and as you spit all of it out at her she holds a hand up <gasps> counterspell oh what a bitch how many fucking spell slots does this bitch have um and bonus action Oh, sorry. That was yeah. That wasn't. That was just a normal. That was a free action that you were taking. Uh, Mooney, your free action. Mage armor. Oh, self preservation. I like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. You, uh, Mooney, standing at the door, holding Brassica. He's like he's now buried himself uh, into the crook uh, between your arm and your chest. Uh, he's like he's trying to like hide himself away as much as possible. She has like Brassica like nicked under one arm and she's got like her storybook in the other arm. Just like a badass. It's like the wind of the storm is like turning the pages to the ones that she needs. Yeah. It lands uh on uh on the story of uh, a little girl who uh her grandmother made her uh, a winter coat um that she never took off uh, and it protected her from the rain it protected her from the snow and it protected her from her nightmares um and you cast mage armor on yourself again umbra that odd sensation but it's this time it's at the back of your mind it's a you felt it 
but it's not the time to pick at it as Mooney casts mage armor and her skin shimmers with an iridescent light. Um, Dyara, your turn. You're muted. <laughs> Still muted. Um, I'll just go to Mooney. Mooney, your your turn. Ha <laughs> You get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Oh, I feel like I should. You know what? No, I've had enough. I've had enough of this woman. Yay! I'm going to use my last second level uh, spell slot, and I'm going to cast uh, Maximilian's Earth and Grasp. And get my little badger paw made up from the the sides of the cliff and just try to Hulk smash her. And she needs to make a strength save of, oh, let me just double check this here. Um, yep, she has to make a strength saving throw. Okay, um, so it's her strength is minus one. Uh, that is a 17. Oh, that, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, field save. Nope. She doesn't take half damage. She doesn't take anything. But my paw is there. I've got my okay. paw ready. It's still, so you can hold. You can hold it. Yeah, like it's concentration. Okay. So uh, all of you just hear this gravelly, tearing earthen sound, just as it rumbles and tears itself. A large stone and rock and muck badger paw just erupts out of the side of the cliff, half covered in uh, sand grass uh, as it takes a swipe at Vestra and she manages to just sidestep out of the way. Precariously dangling towards the edge of the cliff, she manoeuvres with a very sleek grace. Bonus action, Mooney? I'm going to take a health potion. Okay. And for those of you who are in chat, they're like, sorry, a bonus action for potions? Apparently, I said that that's what I do, so that's I have to stick to that. Um, so bonus, <laughs> health, drinking health potion, bonus uh, action. 2d4 plus 2. Um, 3. And, mm -hmm, uh, 6. Better than nothing. Okay. Diara. Um, I am going to also drink a health potion. Okay. And then how far out is she? Like how far away? You're a lot closer than Mooney would be. You're kind of standing when when at about maybe fifteen feet of her. Um Yeah, so she's just gonna um charge at her uh in a rage because she's fucking pissed and slash at her with her sickle. Oh, okay. Is this like you being cool or is it you're just out of spell slots? <laughs> I'm out of spell slots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll just attack first. Um, wow, 13. Doesn't hit, I'm afraid. Um, you lunge, uh, running right at her, uh, Dyra. You just slash uh with the sickle and you catch a couple of her hair like hairs and they're caught in a wind that seems to billow around her and they dance and toss in the breeze and the wind and out to sea <laughs> this is going to be so easy and she just maneuvers again stepping around you a small bit um what did you get on your health potion uh, I didn't roll it. I'll okay. roll it and then you can come back to me. Yep, perfect. Um, as uh, as she um, as she says this, uh, as she looks you straight in the eyes, Diara, kind of half smothering a laughter, um, she takes a step backwards over the cliff's edge and falls straight back. Like, on purpose or by accident? Nope, on purpose. <laughs> um, but yeah, Diara's just gonna watch her. <laughs> she plummets like... back, and just this plume of white and grey hair is tossed up around her. The edges of her skirt fly up, 
and she looks back and she her again her eyes are on you and she smiles a wicked smile as she points a hand straight up and her whole body rises she casts fly on herself oh, cool. what a show off and she moves straight up uh, i got nine okay recover uh nine health points um and as she um as she floats and, and flies straight up she's now towering about 25 feet above all of you oh shit over the cliff's edge oh she's it out is, like over the sea is she she's yeah she's put kind of a she's put about maybe five feet away from she's about five feet from the cliff's edge okay. and 25 feet up in the air it is uh da, 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 nulra yeah no umbra no, umbra yeah umbra first sorry uh, so, Nora was a, a bit ahead of us. Where is she in relation to the rest of us now? Nora like... had stormed, pardon the pun, down a cliff, down the side of the cliff. Um, she's about 30, 35 feet away. Okay, but she has copped anyway. Yes. Yeah, she heard Vestra and is staring very angrily at her. And you just watched as Diara slashed at her with a sickle and Vestra plummeted over the edge of the cliff and then shot straight back up. Show off. Okay. I like a bit of pizzazz in my villains. <laughs> Wasting of a spell slot, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> it looked cool. <laughs> well, this could potentially be a waste of a spell slot, but Umber is going to attempt to cast hold person on her. Okay. Um, that is a DC 13 wisdom save. Ooh, save. Okay. I have a plus one to wisdom saves. That's a 10. Nope. She fails. Uh, she plummets from the sky. She's paralyzed. Um, <laughs> you, you reach out, uh, Umbra fixating on her and feeling the, the energy just, swelling all around her you know straight away that uh it's transmutation magic she has cast um and as she floats directly above all of you cackling away to herself hysterically you focus on the magic and that's your way in and you twist it and that energy becomes binds that wrap and link around her and you just see a look on her face as she shoots you uh this absolute look of horror <sighs> and she falls uh, she just falls and starts screaming and you just hear her cry out argoyle oh fuck and the sky roars once more with thunder. And standing four inches from you, Diara. Oh, shit. This large suit of armor appears, turns and reaches out for her. Um, he's literally going to use his reaction to try and save her. Um, I'm going to roll that. Okay, well, someone just roll a d20 for me, and you're trying to beat a 14, just so it's... I got 18. Okay. He reaches out to grab her, as in, like, catch her. Instead of, like, doing the whole, like, oh, she fell, she falls into his arms, he actually snags her. Um, he grabs her by the wrist and her whole arm, there's a crack um, as her arm dislocates. Like There's a popping sound. Uh, she like. lets out a shriek, uh, a shriek of pain and she takes a full oof um, 11 damage. Um, nope, wrong way. Ooh. Standing right in front of you, there is a suit of armor, Diara. It is as black as the 
rocks of the cliff, there is an intense energy radiating from it. You can just hear a guttural, agonizing, wheezing sound coming from inside it. And somewhere inside the helm, you feel eyes watching you. Oh. Is it reminiscent of Baru? Is it like the same sort of being? It, 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 you can't help but see Baru. There is something more alien almost about this, something less, less human. Baru had had the disguise of a bard. He was wearing clothes and had a mask. This thing isn't pretending to be anything other than this arcane machine. Is it the same one that was in Cashlon? I know Mooney it, didn't see him. Mooney was the only one that didn't see him, I don't think, was it? Yeah, Mooney was the only one who didn't see him. Yeah, uh, yeah you see all, yeah, it's it's the exact same one. Okay. Um, bonus action, Umbra. Actions, really, there is one question. Would Umbra be able to put together from his experience with Baru as to whether they constitute undead. I don't think they do. I think they just... But I remember there was a kind of a, like a putrefying like stuff in him. Okay, I would tell you you would know they're not undead. Cool. Okay. Um, if that's if that kind of helps that it's yeah i would that's... rather than having anything anything beyond that in terms of what that liquid was and it's you haven't really had the chance to grasp um but if you wanted to try and determine a little bit more about it you could spend an action trying to analyze the creature as it actually stands uh is that good no that's okay yeah yeah no that's okay. literally all i needed it was okay. it was for turn on dead he will not turn on dead <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> good for bonus action. So, yeah, he will. Um, is the area there at like treacherous now? I know the path down was. Is this like? Are we fucked if we get pushed or anything? Yes, you're you're going to be falling over the edge of the cliff if you if you get shoved. Right. <laughs> okay. So he might don't. just position himself behind Dyer. Oh, uh, wait. How close? <laughs> <is he? laughs> To catch her if she falls. Oh, okay. okay yeah, whatever. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Good save there. Good save there, James. Uh, no row. So how far away am I from all this shit? You're, you are uh, You are at least, you're over 30 feet. Um, how much? About about 35. Oh, my movement is 40. Did I say oh. 35? No, I you said 35. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, sure. No, I did. Yeah, you... you, you you would make it. You would make it to Argoyle and um, Vestra if you wanted to on this turn. I would make it to them. Yeah. Let me think. She, so she would have turned. She was focused, hyper focused on finding Reggie. She's still pissed off at Diara and Umbra about what they did. Sorry, just I don't mean to cut across you. I don't mean to break the tension of the game around like that. I will never show off as a villain again. I will never fly ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you should know that now. Okay, I've learned. <laughs> Last time I get for showboating. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Nora. Sorry. Um, she's gonna turn around, seeing this, and all semblance of that message she had from Targal in her head about being patient gone, gone, gone. She's going to just let out a full-on roar of frustration. Enter her rage. She's going to take a javelin from her back and she's going to throw it at Vestra. And after she does that, she's going to immediately extra attack, run up, drag her fucking great axle on the ground and just slash it at Argoyle. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Give me, a, give me an attack roll against Vestra. Obviously, all reckless, by the way, yeah. as per usual. 24 to hit. And that is a D6. Yay, I got a 6. 10. I left a 13 damage okay. to her Ooh. with the. No, sorry. 12. Okay. 
and the and then the great axe against him. Sorry, what did you hit her with? A javelin. Oh, you threw it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Go on, you rat. Do your ratting. No, it's not. It's it's because she's paralyzed. You crit if you're within five feet of her. Uh, okay. No, and then your no, attack roll against relevant. Paragoil. Uh, 26 to hit. Okay, that hits. And that is a... Fourteen damage. Okay. Um, two seconds now while I make a note of this. And okay. Take eight lightning damage, uh, Nora. Shit. Um, as and sorry, how much damage do you do to Argoil? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. And you said uh, eight to me. Yes. Yeah. Um, you throw uh, the javelin straight at Vestra and though Argyle attempts to kind of shield her with his body um, it catches her and it's now sticking out the other side of her left shoulder um, her she lets out a howling pain and as she f- looks straight at you Argyle turns uh, defensively once more uh, his arm twists out and lightning begins to crackle around the edges of it, and you bear straight down on top of him, your great axe tearing through the cliffside. Stones, dirt, and dust all flick up as you slash straight into him. You carve right through the armor. The casing immediately just vomits up this black ichor. Umbra. Wisdom saving throw. <gasps> oh no, 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 no. It. You hate to see it. Oh, no, we don't hate to see it. That is a 21. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will tell you that the DC has gone up again. Um, it has gone up by one, another one, just as a thing. Immediately, uh, your sensations, Umbra, your sense of smell, your taste, your eyes, your eyes dazzle. Uh, and are blinded by the energy that just pours out of this creature. You can taste it. You can feel it. You can almost hear it. It sounds it sounds like a thousand wasps buzzing in your ears. And you, for a moment, desperately wish to devour it. You oh, push no. the thoughts away. And you just see Nulra step back as lightning shoots off of the armor striking her I just let a roar out Regiment! like I need him beside me now Ev- so at this stage Diara Mooney uh, sorry no Mooney is the only one who's not within uh, 10 feet of or sorry 5 feet of Vestra and Argoyle um m- Umbra, Umbra is standing behind Diara. <laughs> <laughs> Remember? In case she fell? <laughs> like right behind her. Woo! Fair, Fair enough. enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Get, um, him. <laughs> get him, sis. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you can do it. Uh, Nulra and Diara, give me deck saving throws, please. Okay, we'll do that first. I have a question for after this. Okay. Mr. Oh, danger sense. I sense danger. I get advantage. I mean, do you? It's the tone you say it with. <laughs> 14 for me. Okay. A save and throw? Yeah. Uh, 18. Okay, so... Um, both of you take 8 lightning damage. Mentor? Yeah. I know Nuller's going through some stuff right now, but do her ancestral protectors still come into play here? No. Read the fine print when I tell you you don't have ancestors or a connection to them. Um, Just ask. How much damage did you say? Eight. Eight lightning damage. Not that damage. Um, As... uh, as the two, uh, like, and you can see it, Umbro, from where you are standing, just behind Diara. Um, the armor crackles. Like, you can actually see the plates of armor actually vibrate a little bit. A pulse of electrical energy just 
erupts out of the armor, uh, striking uh, Diara and Nulra. Oh, that was him. I thought it was her. No, that was him. Um, oh. And as uh, as he does, uh, as this happens, um, he holds one hand straight up uh, above his head. The other hand still wrapped and his body is now turned defensively protecting Vestra. He holds a hand straight up. He is struck by lightning. But he holds the energy in oh, his hand fuck. and he lunges straight out at you, Nulra, with it um, as he goes to stab you with uh, a lightning spear. He gets advantage, uh, by the way. Yep. No, don't worry, I didn't forget. Um... Okay, that's a nat 20. Oh, it's two nat 20s. Um, oh, it's two nat 20s. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> so we'll be doubling the old damage on that. Um, what kind of damage is it? Uh, it? It's piercing and lightning. Okay, so that's just, we have to do some math there. Okay, so it's just six. Have all the old piercing there. Okay, so six plus three plus two. So that's 11. So five piercing damage. Ha that's with a half. And then 2d6 worth of lightning damage. Uh, and 6 lightning damage. Okay. Is he still holding Vestra? He is, yeah. Um, Mooney, it's your action. You just watched this creature lunge uh, with a spear made of lightning and he stabs Mooney with it. Or, Me. sorry, um, Nulra with it. Um, and it's holding. Oh, sorry, sorry to cut across, Cat. Can I use my reaction, Stones Endurance? Is oh, okay? yeah, of course. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. May I? Okay. No, I mean, like, Cat yeah. said you could, so I was like, yeah, whatever Cat says goes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's off. levels, in which case it doesn't work. <laughs> 10 damage reduced. So, okay. sorry, Cat, go ahead. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to take a risk because it would have moved out of range of my badger paw, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, because of Veth, where yes. it was no, it, I yeah, but the only thing is it's in range. The problem is you also have Diara and Nulra sort of in the way of this badger paw. But it's not, it's not a radius, so would it just, would it still be able to target? Yeah, yep, yeah. and she's still paralyzed. Yes. Yeah. So you're saying we would get hit instead, or as well? No. Um, I think the badger paw itself would come down. the The big like, rocky badger paw would come down. You're going to now. I will tell you that she is being protected by Argoil. <sighs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. But what would that mean, though? Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. Might... Hmm? Hold on. Okay, I won't say it until. Oh okay. my God, Kat, it looks like you've got a little bonnet when you do that. It's very cute. Because there's one of two things I can do. Okay, I'm going to do this. And if it feels, I'll do the other thing on my next turn. Badger Paw is going to try and grab, just snatch at Vestra. Okay. Yeah. And that is a... Um, It'll be a strength save of 15. Okay. So in this case, it would be... You're because he's trying to protect her, so I'd be it'd be against his strength save. Okay. Um, is he not just like holding her though? No, I distinctly said that he had like embraced her, like he's holding her, and like one hand is using the spear to keep Nulra at bay, okay. um, like a cattle he... prod. Um, that's... <laughs> <laughs> It's a 23, I'm afraid. Well, he's, he's in for it the next round. Okay. <laughs> Kat, you're having such bad luck with your big badger paw. I'm dying for it to get someone. Well, no, it got someone last time. Oh, yeah, he's, he's going to regret that. <laughs> bonus action? Um, I don't think I have any bonus actions to make. Mm, let, me, let me double check here just so I can get ready for, get ready Potion. for it. Um, do you have a potion left or did you use them both? No, I, let me just see what the range is for that. Oh. Yep. So I'm going to, oh, I don't think I can. 
Uh, oh no, I can't. Bonus action, hidden step. I'm going to turn myself invisible. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, the badger, the, the rock or the stone badger paw that ripped itself out of the cliff uh, comes straight up along and it moves through the earth. And again, this time it comes straight up. It swings down towards Vestra. And again, Argoyle, this suit of armor, turns defensively, bringing the spear up. It lunges straight up and stabs at the paw. And at that moment, Muni, you just vanish. And as you do, you just hear a whisper. The storm is coming. Dara. What storm? I'll come to that in a second, sorry. Dara. Oh, no. Um, Keep him here. Don't let him escape. So she, he has hit one arm wrapped around her. Yeah. So if I was to lunge at her with a weapon, could I go like under his arm? Yeah, you you, you can still swipe at her. The you with a sickle, the sick the blade, the sickle blade is a lot smaller. The badger paw a lot bigger, a lot easier to defend against. Um, okay, so. Um, I'm going to try and attack her with my dagger and my sickle at the same time, or like one after the other. Okay. If that makes sense. So do yeah. a like lunge and yeah, stab. Yeah, slash and then stab, yeah. Yeah. Um. So dagger, 19, uh, 21. Yeah, that hits. And 24 uh, for four. Oh wait, because I'm five feet, is it a crit hit? Auto crit on any attacks within five feet. Yep. Yeah. So what does that mean? What's the damage on the? So what's your? Uh, it's a d a d four. So it's a four plus four is eight. Okay, and then the sickle is the same. So that's seventeen. That okay. hits. Yeah. Um, and it's a d four as well. So another eight. Okay. Right. Um, Ayara, you it the energy that emanates out of Argoyle, it doesn't seem to put you off. And as you watch him turn in that instant where he's distracted by the the rock paw uh, that Mooney conjures up, you see him turn and there's a moment, there's a window where you have a uh, an opportunity to to get Vestra and she sees you but held in his arms still trapped by uh, Umbra's hold person you stab with the dagger and you catch her arm and as you do you tear uh, through her with the sickle um, and she you can actually see her whole body go limp for a moment uh, like she she looks badly uh injured she she doesn't look good um and that was your action then your bonus action was the second attack okay yeah just st like being propped up by argoyle she she looks down at the wound in her hand and then her eyes lock with you again There's only four of you left. I will succeed where Mathis, where my brother failed. I will stop you. You will not be the end of this world. And her eyes just crackle uh, with storm energy. Um, with paralysis, she... She's tech. Oh, she can't. She, 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 yeah, she technically can't speak or anything. You can't do much. No, she can't. She can do fuck all. But at the end of her turn, she can reroll the save. So she wouldn't okay. get to do anything, but she could potentially free herself of it here. Sure. Okay. What's the. Uh, 13 wisdom. Okay. Still only a plus one to that. Okay, that's an 18. Um, no. So. She it doesn't matter. She's like it's not you, Umbra. You feel that magic 
just dissipate that that hold you had on her she's still not able to hold herself up she's whatever fight whatever adrenaline whatever strength she has in her it's depleting uh and she spits this out at you what did she say about us Declan? did she say it to me or to umbra she said it to you uh diara you were the one that attacked her what did she say about us exactly again that we're gonna you were bringers of the end so diara is gonna say you're not gonna be the one to end our world look at you We would, your place in, in this world is forsaken. Oh, she said the thing. <laughs> and it is Nora. Ooh. Sorry, I'm choking on that. Wow. Oh, no, right, Umbra. 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 Get oh, out of here. Goodness. Get oh. out of here. Continue Taco. choking. <laughs> I'm um, so forsaken. No. When will I rise? Ah, never. Okay. <laughs> There's a level there, Declan. No. Okay. <laughs> Looking, I think on the mention of her brother, any um, any inclination towards leniency? Oh leaves Umbra as the uh, image of their burning home uh, comes to mind. And he is going to rush her attempt to weave in and cast Inflict Wounds with his last spell slot. Okay. It is 17 to hit. You you sweep around Diara and half step between her and Argoyle and you just see Vestra's eyes watch you as you just dance between her guardian and her targets. And as you reach out and you put a hand on her, you feel like you. there's a shock, Umbra, where when you touch her. And as you reach out and the magic just rips and burns off of you towards her, her eyes lock on you as she uses her last third level spell slot. <gasps> Counterspell. At least she didn't get you with the lightning bolt again. Small mercies. <laughs> Bonus action. Drink a potion. That potion I'm isn't a normal potion. potion. That is an action potion. potion. Uh, um, oh, you don't. You don't have any healing potions. <laughs> what can he do here? I suppose just so he's not in range of potential lightning explosions, he will. <laughs> uh, he'll probably. He'll probably duck back out. Okay. <laughs> Just gonna, just gonna... <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, Diara. Just... Sorry. <laughs> I, I would say if you're going to move out of this space, you are going to take an attack of opportunity from Argoyle. But, yeah, no, I mean, that's fine. As long as... Yeah, no, he hasn't used a reaction this turn, has he? No. Uh, no, he didn't. Yeah. No, he yeah, actually... We'll no, he, no, to be fair, he did. I did use my reaction to defend uh, Vestra. That's why I made him. So I. That's you are. Look at you. Like that was a very subtle, running there. That was a very subtle running. Uh, that was very subtle running. I. I can appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Nulra, it's your turn. Uh, Vestra looks like shit, doesn't she? I mean, I mean she, she looks, looks like great. She looks great. She's bleeding <laughs> profusely, but her hair is fab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I think she, her instinct is to go for Argoyle but she's trying to put two and two together in her head which is very difficult for her it's four like, this is an automaton <laughs> if we get rid of Vestra this thing will stop because 
Sorry, guys. Regiment's not here. So she needs to put an end to this as quickly as possible before anyone else gets hurt. If Regiment was here, she'd probably try and take down Argo before he would, but he's not. So she's going to... She's going to make one last cry out, Regiment! And then she's going to go for Vestra with her axe. Reckless attack, that is 24 to hit. Yep, that hits. That is... 13 damage. Okay. She's just going to swing it straight down. It... Argoyle kind of half twists himself. Um... But he's not quick enough as you just scream Regiment and Vestra screams right back. He's dead. And your axe just catches her right into the arm and the shoulder and you bury it into her. Uh, her whole body, like, there's her, she shakes like her whole, like, it, it's like swatting a ragged doll. And you just see her eyes flash with pain and this moment of realization that this is it. Is she still alive? She's staring at you and she coughs up blood. Nora's going to just roar at her. You're fucking lying! And she's going to use her extra attack and bring the axe down on her again. Don't forget their crits. Oh! Oh, oh, well, you, you can add another 12 on the last one. <laughs> no, they're not quits because they're, they're not crits because she's... Oh, she's not, she's not, she's not paralyzed, paralyzed anymore. anymore. Oh, God oh, damn it. That would have been fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> but as soon as she goes unconscious, they are crits and crits are oh, two okay. failed death saves. Yeah. I'll try my best. Try my best there, brother. Hold on there. 23 to hit. Um, 15 damage. You pull the... You, you're just going to kill her? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, you pull the axe <laughs> straight out, and the one person who could have given you any ounce of information, you pull it straight out, and you bring it straight down on top of her head. Um, she looks straight up at, at the blade as it comes right down on top of her. A flicker of lightning wisps across her eyes as Vestra of the True Vow dies. Argoyle's armor glows red. Oh, shit. Um, give me a dex saving throw, Diara and uh, Nora. I know. I don't know if we can do this. Okay, never mind. Sorry. I got a nat 20. Uh, oh, so did I! Oh, my God! <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> okay. Um, both of you take 10 lightning damage. Oh. <laughs> Just gonna drink that potion real quick. <laughs> um, again, on as he's, um, as he, as Vestra falls the limp uh, in his arms, there is just this weeping bellow from inside the chest. And you just hear a, no. <gasps> And the whole thing turns. It lays Vestra's body down on the ground. Turns and again a ripple of electrical magic just erupts off of it. Striking at the boat of you. It lunges out uh, with the spear. Taking a step forward. A second wave of electrical energy rips off of it. Both of you give me uh, deck saving throws again. I'm down, it doesn't matter. Eighteen. Three and two and three, two, five, and nine. So that's four lightning damage for you, uh, Nora. And what what was your deck save, Dara? Nineteen. Okay, so take four lightning damage. Yeah, I'm down. The pulses of lightning uh, and energy off this creature are now faster. Like the the plates are vibrating an awful lot quicker. Umbra, from where you are, you can kind of see that 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 ichor that just 
poured out of her, gushed out of the wound that uh, Nulra tore into its chest cavity. It is... It's pulsing. You can see it's actually causing the armor to lift. It's rippling through its body. It's as if it's losing cohesion. And you see, start to see several glyphs on its armor light up. And as a second blast or wave of this energy just erupts out of it, again, Dyara and Nulra, you are hit with it. Dyara knocked off her feet um, as she falls unconscious. It is Mooney. Ooh. I'm going to do something risky and I'm going to cast Reduce and make him small. Oh. A has to make a con save okay. of 15. Uh, con is plus five. That is an eight. <laughs> so his size is reduced by one. So if he's medium, he is now small. Okay, he is... He's medium, yeah, so he's now small. Now he's uh... small. He has disadvantage to uh, strength, uh, strength checks and strength saving throws. And any weapon attack does 1d4 less damage. Okay. And he can't pick her up and leave because he's small boy. You uh, maneuvering around the cliff a little bit. You see Vestra lying there. She's not moving. Uh, a a huge, like her skull almost split in half. Argoyle moves closer to Nulra and Diara, and with that, as you hear a whimper. A whisper out of Dyara as she collapses to the ground. You focus on him, Muni, and you just uh, Brassica tugs on the sleeve of your your dress, and you know that is your magic. Your magic is inside Aragoil. It is the same energy. What? It is chaos. And you condense it. You shrink it. You cause the magic to collapse in on itself. And the whole creature just diminishes in size. Before Nulra and Umbra. Fuck. Bonus action. Can she talk to him? To the... To Argoyle? Argoyle, yeah. Yeah, are you, you you so you've dropped yeah yeah you had to have dropped invisibility with the oh yeah, it, yeah it's yeah. only six seconds long anyway yeah um she's just gonna take one step closer to him so she's now twenty five feet away and she's just gonna ask um I don't suppose you know anybody by the name of Barry or Aaron by any chance. Aragoyle turns to you. Hello. I'm sorry for your loss. Run. <gasps> From ye over the storm. Away. Where to? Where from? Run. <laughs> and Nora. Oh, Mooney, will you, are sorry, Dyer, will you make a death saving throw? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a six. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Nulra. Umbra, it's your go, I think. Oh, sorry, I keep, I keep doing that. Umbra, yeah. Uh, he will 
drag Diara. He will from behind her. He will like grab her under the arm, just hands under the armpits, and like pull her away a little bit further down the path, um, just to get her away from danger. Um, and he'll lean down and he'll like kneel with her head on his lap and uh, took her uh, took her hair back and put his hands on her stomach and cast spare the dying to stabilize her. Okay. Um, just maneuvering away from this suit of armor that is croaking out uh, these words and the armor still continues to pulse the plates continue to lift and vibrate the the ichor within continues to move almost of its own volition it is falling off of him in clots uh, it is pooling around him it's trying to find its way back inside him you sweep Diara backwards your arms is dragging her uh, along the ground and as you do you feel that pulse that fading life within her and you just cast magic inward and you pull her back um bonus section uh no no bonus action but he will step in front of her now uh shield raised Nulra. Where is everyone in relation to me now? Right now, you are the only one. Everybody else is about 20, 25 feet away from you and Argoyle. Mooney, All you back near? away from the cliff. Are you beside Diara and Umbra? Yeah, I'm 25 foot back. I'm yeah. well far. She's going to have seen Diara fall beside her. And with a wail, she's just going to cry out again, Regiment! And she would normally go to strike Argoyle again, but without Regiment beside her, she's doubting herself. She'll reluctantly back away and turn and run over to the others reefing the potion out of her pocket as she runs and she's just going to thrust it into Umbra's hands to give to Diara. She doesn't trust herself. Her hands are shaking. I have one. I don't know that. I don't know how many <laughs> you've drank. The armor takes what looks like a reluctant step towards all of you again when it does you see it, it actually it falls and folds like the liquid moving inside a bottle it follows the curve and as it slumps down it slowly kind of half rises up again and now the plates of armor the glyphs that have erupted along it the whole plating is a light and pulse after pulse of electrical energy continues to just ripple off of it. Father, help. Please. And a flash of light just blinds all of you. The entire town of Cove is swallowed in this brilliant, horrifying, bright light. Sixteen. Seven twenty three. Nat 20, 20, 53, another nat 20, 83, and 5, 88. Can I, at us? Uh, no. I'm rolling, 
I'm rolling for the distance. Oh. Whatever it is, Nolwa will throw herself on top of Dyara. Oh. Don't do that. I'm okay. It's fine. No, doesn't matter. That's what she's doing. The village and all those in it, all those at the edges of the light, saw four silhouettes cast against it. All those able to maintain, to hold what they saw, all swore. There was a moment where a woman appeared. Large, raven-like wings engulfing the cliffside as the entire cliff, the mansion, the sea beyond it, the rocks below it, are obliterated. <gasps> Everything from the point where Argyle stood within an 88 foot radius is annihilated. Did that reach the village, Declan? Just reached the other side of the mansion. Some of the houses and a few people who might have been in the vicinity of it are gone. Okay. But the vast majority of people are in the square or out hunting the uh, Ferens men that Oh, fuck. What could have been the max? Oh, I rolled... I, I could have rolled if I rolled 520s. Like, <gasps> it could have been oh, 150 wow. feet. Uh, so I rolled two nat 20s, and that, that was 20 feet plus another 10 feet for every nat 20. Um, Shit. Everything is frozen. And Nolra, you, you throw yourself on top of Diara and Umbra. You saw the flash just rippling out of it, out of the armor. And everything, every fiber in your being told you to protect them. And Brassica buries himself under your chin, Mooney, and you just hear, the storm is coming. It's here. And he whimpers. What and all of you blinded by this light. And then you hear the wind screaming around you. You feel as if where you were standing has been just torn away from you. You feel yourself falling and spinning beyond the cliff's edge, below the sea and deeper even, into a void. And each of you, for a moment, see a hallway. And Diara, when you look down it, Poking his head out of the door, you see eight-year-old Redmond. He doesn't say anything. He, he never says anything. Unless it's to Alaria. And he smiles at you. And you see that his face is painted in raspberry and peach jam. And the crumbs of a pastry that he nicked from Mrs. Sapris's pantry all the evidence of it is there. And in his small hand, he just gestures, and you see that he has pilfered a second tart for you. <laughs> oh. And he just starts to take a little nibble out of it and laugh <laughs> as he disappears behind the door. Umbra, the hallway ends at a doorway. And inside... You can hear 
rummaging. And a snoring sound all at the same time. And the door opens itself as if the bellowing snorts from beyond it to pull the door free from its lock. And tossing and turning, you see 14-year-old Regiment. He's, he always does this. He snores, he farts, <laughs> he talks in his sleep, he shouts in his sleep, he fights Nolra in his sleep. And his eyes blink open very sleepily at you and he smiles. And then he just kind of throws a boot at the door and it slams shut. And you just hear a snort and a laughter beyond. Amuni, you turn around in the hallway because a small squad of squirrels and chipmunks have escaped from under your bed and the little labyrinth you had built them. Regmond desperately trying to sweep them up into his coat and a pillowcase. The entire time the chipmunks keep calling him the toast man. <laughs> and you're not quite sure what it is until you spy just a couple of slices of slightly burnt toast half hanging precariously and a, a small little squirrel is trying to reach up to pull it out of his pocket and he goes to to swipe at it and instead he pulls the toast out and he starts to feed the critters you brought mm -hmm. home again and he just smiles up at you what's this one called that's me simon <laughs> <laughs> He likes toast. And Nolra. You find yourself outside the Red Orchard. Sitting on the wall. Looking down at the village of Canuck. It was a day like this. An evening like this. You were waiting for news. Your appointment to the militia the captain. And you can just kind of willing the time to pass. And something catches you between the shoulder blades. And there's a faint smell of earth as a dirt clod crumbles against your back and a snort, a very familiar, overly confident, smarmy snort breaks the silence and Regmond is standing there and he waves at you. She reaches down for the nearest clump of dirt and fires it straight back at him. You miss. Regiment was always better at throwing dirt clods than you anyway. <laughs> he says this, and you can hear it, and you can feel it. But he comes over to you anyway, waving a... That's definitely Mr. Sapris's handkerchief. You've no idea why he stole it, but he has it. Um, it's probably a prank for Umbra later. Um, and he just... He plods over to you, crossing the little dirt path between the gate and the house climbs up onto the wall and just thumps you on the arm doesn't say anything she thumps him back but she'll scoot a little bit closer to him as the four of you stand there sit there Crouch, follow. You all hear a weeping, a 
crying that is painful. It is unbearable. A mother's cry. And at the corner of your eye, each of you sees Alaria. Your brother. I couldn't save him. He he was too close. the edge tangled in fate's threats I couldn't save him no that's that's not fair that's not fair you saved Umber twice you did it twice with him. Why not Regiment? That's not fair, ma'am. She moves down the road towards you, Nora. He... He was my spirit. He was your brother. He was my son. And I couldn't save him. I'm so sorry. Where call is he? her. No, no, no. Call her. Call her. Get her over here. If she saved me, she can save him. Yeah, you can. You can. You can save him. Did Not you even try? Did you even try? The world is changing. There are forces at play beyond even my control. I did everything. No. Everything. Where is he? Where is he, ma'am? gone tell us where we can find him we'll bring him back ourselves he doesn't exist of course he exists what do you mean he doesn't exist same way home didn't exist, or? I don't expect any of you to forgive me. What did or you believe. do? I saved him. I saved all of you. From what? F 
from death. When you were just little ones, I saved all of you. I gave you a home. I gave you Canuck. I gave you a family. But give him back. He's not mine to give. He is beyond my reach. How were you able to reach us in the first place? You said you saved us from death. Where'd we come from? Nora. You've seen it. What? Your moment. I don't understand. I don't understand any of that stuff. The mountains. The voices. I don't know what any of it means. It only happened when I took that potion that you gave me. You died there, Nora. As a child, you died there. Why did you bother? Why did you bring me back? The same reason I brought each of you back. Only? No. To give you a chance. Do you have any idea what it is to watch to carry that burden? I just wanted I needed to give a chance. Burden. We have watched Umber die twice, ma'am. Regiment, we didn't even see him die, and now you're saying he's gone? You're not the only one with fucking burdens. So Vestro was right. None of us are supposed to be here. She moves. said that we would end the world. She moves around each of you, standing right in front of you, and Redmond, in all his ages and all his forms, vanishes. And it's just Alaria and the four of you standing here in the hallway of the Red Orchard. My actions pulled each of you out of fate's plan. There are people who have learned of my actions and move against me, against you. You are not at fault. That is my blame to carry. I don't know what to do. How to make it right to you. Well then go. No, don't go. We'll take care of ourselves, just go. You've done enough. If you can't bring Reggie back, who can?
I can't bring him back. But my father might be able to. So where do oh, we look. find him? There is... There is word that my father stayed behind when all of us were supposed to leave this plane. It carries so much risk for all of you. But Nora, you most of all. Why me? I look, I don't care. If it brings him back, I don't care. Tell us what we have to do. There is... There are seven peaks in Jaskin. A mountain range beyond the frozen tundra. At the end, my father waits. I can take you as close as possible, but I beg you, please, please, if not for my sake, then for Regiment, do not do this. Your sake doesn't matter to me. I'm going to do anything to get my brother back. You've done enough damage already. She bows her head. And the wind gets louder. And everything gets dark and cold. All of you just hear, I'm sorry. And the four of you find yourselves standing just outside a small cottage, deep in a frozen forest. The sky overhead is a blanket of a thousand thousand stars. Your breath catches the cold prickles. And inside the cottage, you can see a light flickering. And the faint smell of warm porridge. And Eileen Sapris's peach and raspberry tarts. What? And we'll leave the story there. Thank you all so much um, for joining us this evening. Um, oh, I need to shake that out a small bit, sorry. Um, oh my, I can't. I'm I uh, thanks so much to uh, Fiona as Nolra, Kat as Mooney, Eilish as Diara, James as Umbra, and the uh, <laughs> aforementioned Emma as Regmond. Um, I am Declan. Uh, I've been your dungeon master, and this was book two of Rise of the Forsaken. Um, 
we are D8 Dungeon. We are a group of Irish podcasters and streamers uh, creating content to share with the world uh, in the joy of storytelling. Um, and heartbreak and emotional heartbreak. damage. <laughs> yeah, all, all those all those wonderful things. Uh, <laughs> do check us out on Twitter at D8 Dungeon and most social media at D8 Dungeon. Uh, we have a Discord server with some phenomenal, phenomenal people in it. It's a great place to make... Uh, meet fellow creators, uh, make some new friends and some really funny memes. Um, that was oh my intense. Um, oh, so much. Um, I... Thank you, Declan. Want, uh, yes. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. I'll be, I'll be having a <laughs> my real mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um, God, I'm so emotionally worn out from all that. I feel bad like I was wiping my snots off in front of everyone on stream. That was fun. Good. Bring um, tissue next time. There's, uh, yeah, uh, we are taking a short break before we begin uh, book three. Um, stay tuned for the end of this. We usually do jump in uh, and raid some other uh, TTRPG streamers, but uh, there is a very special um, video at the end of this. Oh, uh, that what I is love. this? We don't know about this. You don't know what it's about. Uh, should I, would... I join the stream and see? You well, you can. You should all join the stream and see. I would suggest muting your mics so we don't hear you all wail. Um, <laughs> uh, but you can. Uh, you can. This uh, this was Rise of the Forsaken. Uh, these are my incredible cast of players. Uh, over the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, we are getting ready for a whole new batch of stories and adventures, and we are going to be looking to work with other folks in the community who just love telling stories. And if that sounds like something you are up for and sounds like something you uh, would enjoy and you'd like to help us tell stories, um, then get in touch. You can find us, like I said, on social media at DA Dungeon. Join our Discord, reach out to me. You'll catch me at on Discord as Dovda on Twitter as the Dova Queen with threes instead of E's because uh, someone stole it. Um, and you can always contact us at d8dungeon at gmail.com. Um, yeah, it's going to be weird not seeing you all for the next. Well, I'll be around for DM notes and map making as well, but not streaming is going to be weird for a little while. But yeah, thanks so oh much. My God. Uh, Thank you. We will hopefully see you all again very, very soon for the next story yay yes. are we ready i'm not should we mute our mics did you say yeah, you, should, you should yeah do you're we, gonna be on cam do we you're gonna up? be on cam no you don't level up you're gonna be on cam for mics uh for reactions but uh yeah switch us over to the epilogue now i will have to do some real quick sh quick fire resizing the video so bear with me all <sighs> how fucking dare you you have no idea what i could have been without you but you needed to save me for your own gratitude because you take whatever it is that you want how dare you show me happiness only to take it away i never i never knew what it was like to be truly loved every day and that's what you brought me I had, I had everything, only for you to take it away. left me on the boat ma it's just, it's 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 too hard it's too hard without you how am i supposed to do anything i mean like i can't even boil an egg and i'm always hungry you know who's gonna be there when i bring home my first love or or who's gonna pick me up when i fuck up for the hundredth time you're the only one who understands and now it seems just created it all to abandon us. 
You let Umbra die. You are death. And you let him die. And is this it? Have you killed me now too? None of this makes sense, man. I just wanted, I just wanted to tell Nora. I pushed a guy off a cliff. She would have fucking loved that. I tell Diara she, she deserves to be loved. Not by some loser from the town, but by someone deadly. And I just want to be there for Mooney so I can fight off whatever stupid, hostile animal she has tried to engage into a friendly chat. But no, you took away their brothers. Because you can. I never even got to tell Umber what a class brother he is, in spite of how lame he is. He always knew how to fix my graze knee or, or burn arm or whatever injury I had from beating Nora. But here we are. Go on. Tell me how you did it all for love. So now we just weep off quietly into the sunset, yeah? Oh, fuck you, Emma. <laughs> Honestly, that was not okay. Emma, you're oh. dead. Emma, you are fucking dead. Yeah, that, that's the plan. That's the oh, plan. Oh, my God. This <laughs> <game>. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. And Can Declan, I just make through a stream and I cry? <laughs> Declan, you're a fucking accomplice. You don't get away on stage. <laughs> oh, that was so cope. beautiful. I can't do this. Oh. No one can do this. Uh, My GP will be in contact with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we take Upa and VHI. Um, <laughs> Emma, we're... oh my god, I can't get over that, oh. you snakes. Um, yeah. Um, thanks so much, Emma, for taking the time to record that. Um, that was <gasps> kick-ass. Um, can't wait for you to come back um yeah. and to the rest of you schmucks thanks so much for an awesome evening as always um you're, you're deadly are we gonna we're gonna jump into a raid are we gonna go join somebody yeah we are keep we're gonna up. raid keep these squirt games cool raid. bring the trauma go team bye bye love go. you guys See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> i'm okay your siblings if you have them <laughs> hug no. your pets if you don't um, hug okay. your pets either way in fact just hug your pets they're probably yeah they're cool. okay goodbye. They're, they're good they're good Bye. they deserve a hug yeah. Bye. <sighs> oh my god <laughs> we need to bring him back that was unreal that unreal. was so beautiful Seriously, I'm just after I'm just listening to the Chris Carter to see if they were announced that we. No. Ooh, does she have real horns or are they fake horns? They're like fake horns. Are they fake horns? Wish I had horns. 
Uh, yeah. Oh my god! What a that's it. RDM for a couple of months. Functionally oh, a month. Dated of <laughs> ish. Month ish. Oh,